Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming, an absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you here in wonderful Cannes. Maybe you could kick off with a brief introduction to your film, Remains of the Wind. Uh, okay. It's, uh, it's a story mainly about uh, the circles of violence that, uh, and the way we, we keep on allowing it to, to happen in, in, in our societies and in our lives. Um, I think that sums it up in a way. <laughs> But uh, if you, you want me to go over the story itself? Or? Um, and maybe you could just say a little bit about um, the inspiration behind it, um, why okay. you decided to you know, take this very specific setting and this pagan tradition and, and build a story around it. Okay. Um, the, the idea itself came from meeting and uh, getting to know uh, someone very close to Laureano, one of the characters. Mm -hmm. And he had um, something in his past that happened that was quite violent. And uh, I met him already as a full-grown man. And, and the way he behaved, it was something that uh, always uh, surprised me and, and got me very curious about it. And violence and the perpetuation of violence was always something that really annoyed me and I, I don't like it, the way we, we keep on doing it. And, um, and the idea of the traditions, they, they keep on doing it uh, very, very much. And I think that was one of the main reasons to go in there. It's, try to understand why we keep on allowing these kind of behaviors to happen. Mm. And then we made a study of different kind of pagan traditions mm. and we put them all together in one. Mm. So, so it was, that was the, the reasons where we came to it because I wanted to, to tell a story about the violence and the consequences of, the, of our actions. Mm when we don't realize. The, the film seems to sort of ooze this authenticity, like it's so very much rooted mm -hmm. in the, the sights and sounds of, of this small rural village. Yeah. Um, how did you kind of make that be so palpable on the screen? Was it a lot of research? Did you have to spend a lot of time there working with the actors? And no, it, it was a lot of working with the actors. We, we did um, some a period of rehearsal prior to shooting and um, but that's something that I always try to do with uh, with the cast but uh, about the place itself the place it's very much as it is I think we we kept it almost as it is it, it's a very deserted isle, uh, uh, village in in the country and uh, what got because I, I wanted something isolated, but I didn't want, um, how do you call it, a postcard village. Because Portugal, you have a lot of beautiful villages that are like postcards. And I wanted, I wanted something that was real, that, was, uh, that it had this feeling. So it took a while to find it, but when we found it, uh, we didn't do much. And uh, we have a great sound person capturing all the things that we have there mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that was it we were able to to capture exactly what what was there and I think what's interesting about the setting is that and, and the way you shot it is that at times it can seem very beautiful kind of the yeah. the landscapes and um, the nature yeah. um, but it can quite quickly seem also oppressive and bleak you know when yeah. you see the different corners of it um, sometimes the houses they live in seem to close in on them and you get that sense of deprivation and lack of economic opportunity, yes. sort of that this place has been stuck in time and stagnated somehow, mm -hmm. um, which seems to reflect also the subject matter. Yes. Um, so was that also crucial to plot? Yes, yes, the, all, the, the choices of, the, of all the places we shot in the village, I wanted that, I'm not going to tell it the ugliness, because it wasn't, but I, I really didn't want it to be perfect because that's something that we wanted to put as a layer of the film as mm. well, is like all the violence that's imposed on us, sometimes it's not just physical, it's all this mm. 
cultural and social, economical, and all this that doesn't allow us to to live in a more decent world. And that kind of oppression, I wanted to 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 be in the film, so we could contrast with the character of Laureano, like like society cast him aside, and he's like living in a, he found himself living in a in a mo more I would say pure or genuine kind of way of living, mm -hmm. but in very uh, with very very poor, with not com mm -hmm. completely outcast, mm -hmm. and uh, that that was always something that we wanted to to play with. Why do we put aside certain people, and why why do we keep on? doing these differences between class and uh, mm. and these cultural differences. So it was a, a big pot of mm. all these things that we wanted to touch. And can you tell us a bit about your, your cast? Um, you know, got the younger cast at the beginning mm -hmm. and also the, the, the younger generation in, in the present day. But particularly, you know, this, this trio that kind of at the heart of the story with Albano, um, Nuno and Isabel, mm -hmm. um, which I think is uh, you can see there's just so much complication and history, you know, in, in each of those characters and their dynamics. So that casting must have been very crucial. Um, yes. Talk us about yes. Um, um, I know them like the, the older cast. I know them for a few years. They are, all of them are like people I admire and I, I like very much to, to work with. So I know them well already. So I know exactly what to expect also. And um, so it got, was easy to cast. It, it, it was the idea of the cast is almost the original. When we started working several years ago on the screenplay, we already wrote it for them somehow. And um, so it was very natural for those, for those uh, actors. The young cast, I did a, a casting and um, that was fun because I met a lot of young, talented uh, actors and that was very interesting. It was complicated because of the pandemic also because we had to do a lot of self-tapes. That was something that it's new for me because I don't like it very much. I prefer to be to meet them yeah. because you feel a lot of different things. But still, it was uh, very practical for, yeah. for the way. Yeah. And I think what's interesting, you know, even the, the character of Judai, I'm going to say that wrong, um, you know, you see that Eve, she seems like a very strong woman. Mm -hmm. um, she certainly doesn't come across like a victim. But yeah. you sort of see perhaps there's some kind of internalized misogyny there. And you yes. can see that the yes. that patriarchal um, environment lingers on even into, you know, the yes. present day. Um, so, uh, yeah, maybe you can say a bit about that character in particular, that complexity. Yes, it was very, it was the most difficult uh, character to to find the right balance because uh, it will it would be very easy to portray her as a victim uh, uh, because we could easily pin out the all the all the moments that we could push that ever since she was a girl when the way the mother allows them to come in and all these kind of things that uh, are real and this is also perpetuating that misogyny in, in society. The way the women also deal with it and accept it. That acceptance is violence for me as well. So, and the, that was one of the main subjects. But at the same time, when we put the dilemma of trying to save the daughter, and uh, I, I really enjoy these things of, um, problems that we put into the characters that mm -hmm. he, how are you gonna how, how are you gonna deal with this how are you gonna play with this what we're gonna do with are you gonna do the supposedly the right thing are you gonna say it was her and and i really thought she because there's i don't know you see the film you watch mm -hmm. the film so some people and i like that ambiguity that some people think that Judith in the end knows that they're gonna to, going to kill them. Other people don't buy it and mm -hmm. believe that, no, she thought she was going to save him in a way and save everybody. 
and I like that ambiguity. I don't like to, to give the answer uh, as well, but, but it was very interesting to have a character that was trying always to do the good and, uh, and then be exposed to that kind of, of dilemma because the guys, as soon as they have the problem, they knew how to let's manage a way to mm -hmm. solve this. But for her, it wasn't that easy. It was, I, I think, she, she dies a little when she, she has the conversation with Laudiano because she's, she's giving away a lot of her goodness somehow mm -hmm. and, uh, and she knows it. And um, so it was a very difficult because I, I never wanted to, it's a man's film. It's about the violence on, on men and boys because I think it's very, it's about, it, there's a lot of misogyny in the film as well, but the way society, what we demand from boys and from men, it's, it, it, it gives reason to these kind of things to keep on going. Mm -hmm. The way we educate and, uh, and I'm a father myself and, mm -hmm. and all that, it's, it's been questions all along. Uh, um, during our lives and um, I wanted to go to all those subjects but I think I rambled away from, <laughs> from the question. <laughs> um, I guess yeah just to sort of round it up you know what do you hope that people will take away from watching it because like you say there's all those themes in there yeah. of toxic masculinity but yeah. also how it's passed through to generations because yes. you see the way Pedro's yes. cheating girls yes. and you know yes, how, exactly. how has that you know been passed down from, from his father um, and in that sense um, you know, do you want it to start a conversation yeah. and for people to reflect on this a bit? Yes, yes, that's exactly what, because I, I don't like um, when books or uh, tell me, books or films or whatever, tell me how I'm supposed to feel. I don't like to be doctored, I don't know if you'd say it, doctored, but I don't like to be told how to feel. And uh, for me, that uh, that I'm, it's something that I'm very aware in my films. And like, I, I, I want to give you the options. I want to start the conversation. I want mm -hmm. because I think that's the, that's the big issue we hear. Uh, why this keep on going? Mm -hmm. And what can we do to change it? Mm -hmm. If we want to change it, because there could be people that are okay with it, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I think we should be aware of the consequences of this keep on going this kind of behaviors. So yeah, I think starting a conversation is the, <laughs> is the main goal. And would you say this is something that you feel is particularly problematic in Portuguese society? Or you know, would you say that it's something that just rears its head in different forms in different cultures? I think, it, uh, unfortunately, I think it's all over. And it's, it's, it's worldwide because e even when we were doing the research, because we thought, oh, this is very local, this is very particular from here, these traditions and these things and the way they treat women and how do it. And then when we start researching and it was immediately, <laughs> you, you realize that all over the world this happens and uh, especially Europe and Central Europe, you have a lot of these kind of traditions. and. Uh, and then you realize, okay, and then if you jump the, the ocean and, and you realize the way people keep on behaving and you see, okay, this is, this is eternal. Mm -hmm. This is somehow something that keeps on going and it's all over, it's mm -hmm. spread. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, I don't think it's very unique mm -hmm. to, to the local. Mm -hmm. And finally, what does it mean to you to have your film playing here in, in Cannes? It means a lot. It, it means, uh, especially because for the film, because I think uh, the films more and more have very little room to exist and very s little space. So if you can put it in this kind of, mm. of setting and you, on a, such a big festival, it gives you screening time and it gives you opportunities to, to spread more. And that's, that's very important. And of course, can. Uh, I, this is my first time here. Uh, I've been in Venice, but and now here, and it's very different moods, but very interesting, all of them. Mm. So it's it's very good. 
And it seemed like a wonderful moment for you and, and your cast to be there in the theatre yes. last night, being able to watch it on the big screen together. Yes. No, that was, and especially there was quite a few of them that it was the first time and they haven't seen it yet. So it was like, for me, it was like I was more nervous about their reactions. <laughs> no, but it was, it was interesting on that also because we have very little, as soon as we knew we were selected, we had to finish it in a, in a hurry. Mm -hmm. So there was very little opportunities to show it to anyone. Yeah. And just very quickly, can you tell us what you might work on next? In terms of your projects? Um, I'm working on um, an adaptation of a book. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I want to say it because, no, but it's, I'm working on an adaptation of a, a, a book from an Italian writer. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, it's, it's very well developed already, but uh, I don't think, I don't know if I have the permission from my producer to, <laughs> to communicate it already, but uh, yes, I'm, I'm already hands on on something else. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all that with us um, and really Thank enjoy you. the rest of the time.